Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining me for one last brief talk before we close out this year's Space Settlement Summit. I am Isaac Arthur, host and producer of Science and Futurism with Isaac Arthur, and I have the honor of being the president of the National Space Society. And on behalf of the NSS, thank you for attending. Regrettably, I was unable to attend in person. It is my loss, as nothing beats interacting with people face to face and exchanging ideas on concepts we all find so intriguing. We also planned some excellent workshops for the summit, and I hope you had a chance to enjoy them. The findings of this summit will help us chart a course toward our future in space. The National Space Society is dedicated to humanity developing and settling space, and a big part of that is marketing this idea to our fellow humans and helping find paths for economic development required to support space settlement. During this event, we've been focused on three topics in particular that are critical to economic development of space. Commercial low Earth orbit destinations, in-space manufacturing, and space resources. It isn't hard to see how those will be important to our future in space, but I thought we would spend a few moments talking about how we, ourselves, might contribute to making these dreams a reality, and possibly even a career. I also want to talk about how the National Space Society is working towards these goals, and how you can become part of that work. It might be a bit far forward in the future for us to imagine ourselves working in an asteroid mine or traveling to a space hotel, but those times are coming, and we can help make those times possible by helping to move beyond the simple sketch of a concept to look at the economic realities. The National Space Society fully embraces astronomy and space science, and recently was successful in petitioning NASA to continue fully funding the New Horizons space probe as it explores the Kuiper Belt and broadens our horizons. However, we are fundamentally focused on ways to use space to benefit humanity, whether it's commercial applications, or seeking to get clean energy from space, or defend Earth from asteroids or other space-based hazards. By developing space, by seeking to form communities in space, we can help achieve all those other goals better and sooner. And to do that, we ask you to join our space community down here on the ground. Our mission is a simple one, to promote civilization beyond Earth, to settle space and to use the resulting resources to build a hopeful and prosperous future for humanity. But our vision is a grander one, people living and working in thriving communities beyond the Earth, and the use of the vast resources of space for the dramatic betterment of humanity, and for our world and its other organisms too who will rely on us to take them to strange new worlds one day, and rely on us now to help preserve and protect this one pale blue dot we call home. This is no easy task, and requires bored effort by those who join us. Yes, the NSS is also there to help folks find careers in space, and to find like-minded space enthusiasts to network and talk to about those audacious visions for the future. Foremost, we strive to make those visions possible. To be an organization that helps promote space to the public, to students, to scientists, to private businesses and public institutions, to be a repository for knowledge and a host of forums, in person and online, to share and collaborate on ideas for making space a reality for you and I, not just a majestic mystery above us, forever dreamed of but out of reach. We are at our best when building and exploring, and space offers endless places to do both. But the quest to get there, to build that better future, is what lies before us today. If you dream of being an astronomer or astronaut, then the NSS is for you. If you dream of a career in space, then the NSS is for you. If you dream of founding a company in space, then yes, the NSS is for you. It is a place where you can have a conversation about designing that better satellite and building that new telescope. Space is the place that offers potentially cheap, high bandwidth phone and internet connections to even the most rural and isolated places, an economic sector worth more than almost any country's entire gross domestic product. So too, it is a place where we might generate unimaginable amounts of energy for safe and sustainable transmission anywhere on Earth. Cheap and abundant communication bandwidth and sustainable energy at any place on this planet represents not just potentially trillions of dollars of wealth for those who can design and deliver it, but also unlocks the doors for many dreams here on Earth, enhancing lives while making economic gains and opening paths to new enterprises unrelated to space. 
Space is not just for communication or power satellites, though. It is a place where you might manufacture things only microgravity could permit. Critical metamaterials or semiconductors or alloys that will fuel our future here on Earth. It's a place people may come to live one day, but also a place many would like to come and visit. And we might ask ourselves what else they might like to do while up there, or what else they might see. I know many of you will be making long trips home after this, and again, I promise I won't keep you for too long. But on your trip home, I invite you to contemplate recreational activities we might do in space. I do not know what percentage of global GDP relates to sports, for instance, but I bet there's room in that for games that could only be played in space, potentially whole leagues, and wonder what year the first Olympic Games will be held off Earth, in low orbit or on the Moon or Mars. We would see a low gravity version of the games, like Winter Olympics is the low temperature version, and it is a reminder that there is a large industry given over to winter sports and resorts, requiring folks to travel far and often to inhospitable places, so there is a precedent for parallels in space. We often ask what the first space hotel will be like. I ask you to imagine instead, for a moment, what the first space resort would be like, and what the equivalent to Disneyland in space or on the moon might be. The National Space Society is the place where you could have a serious conversation about how to build a space hotel, and what the business model for that might look like. To ask what the steps are in moving from a present, where a few wealthy billionaires might travel to space, to one where most people can afford it, and which a large percent of the population will travel to space at least once in their lifetime. The NSS is the place to ask such questions, and where you'll find many folks who have asked the same and come up with many ideas to share. To ask questions like whether we should build a base on the moon out of prefabricated parts, or inflatable structures, or local regolith, and also what we can mine there. Where we can and do ask if you can make a profit mining metal on the moon or making rocket fuel there or solar shades or even helium-3, and yes, where we can debate if any of those options is truly viable or maybe just a dream of science fiction. Should we go to Mars or build a moon base first? Does Mars have any economic value? Should we focus on mining asteroids or space-based power generation, or some other Kickstarter industry? Is space a place for robots, or will humans be doing most of the pioneering in person? Will we use rockets to get to those places, or ion drives, or something far more impressive like the Epstein Drive from the Expanse? Space is a place of near-limitless resources and opportunities. Those enormous assets can provide humanity with the resources it needs to improve the quality of life for all humans on this planet of ours, Earth. No one disputes that the vastness of outer space contains immense resources of energy and raw materials, but many doubt its practicality. Our goal is to show that it is practical and economical, and to prove this by making it a reality that none can doubt. And we can never doubt the value of that goal, if achieved. By tapping into these resources we can enhance our quality of life on Earth and in space. Moreover, Relocating harmful and contaminating industries or their byproducts away from our planet can further benefit our environment. It is not just that we can solve the space problem without neglecting our terrestrial problems down here on the ground, to walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. Rather, as we have seen with so many areas of science and technology, in and out of space, what helps one so often helps another. The lessons we learn in space will help us here, and the lessons we learn here will make our industries out there better. Our gains in ecological and psychological sciences for humanity on Earth will strengthen our attempts to build sustainable bases and habitats, or even to terraform new worlds and build new civilizations. There is no area of human learning or endeavor that will not have a role in space, and for that reason there is a home for all fields inside the NSS, but perhaps most of all we need those seeking to build a business in space hoping to make those jobs and careers for themselves and others up above the sky. So this conference in particular, and many other NSS events, seek to lay out the challenges and opportunities for business in space. I wanted to thank our partners for this event, Arizona State and the Thunderbolt School of Global Management, for giving us this forum, along with our sponsors for making this event possible, with their help, and with your help, we can chart a course to a prosperous future in space. There are so many ways space development will benefit us in the far future, and those are always my favorite topics to cover on my own show. 
But to get there, we must forge a space economy built on more modest and near-term goals. I mentioned some earlier and you may have heard many more at the summit. We must never forget that great futures are built by great people making bold but practical ventures succeed. Achieving great futures requires the combined effort of visionaries and pragmatic individuals. I hope you'll join us in making those ventures happen to reach for the stars and dream big. As everyone at this event knows, the sky is not the limit. Thank you for your time and thank you for coming to the 2023 Space Settlement Summit, and I look forward to seeing everyone again face to face at ISDC 2024 in LA. Until then, remember with your hard work all these dreams can and will one day become a reality. Ad Astra.